and gentlemen, welcome to the RSR video email bag show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. Now, here's your host, the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing, Bad Brad Berkwit. Forget about it. Me plum. You came along and everything started into hum. Still, it's a real good bet. The best is yet to come. Hey, folks, the best is yet to come. Francis Albert Sinatra. Nobody touches that song like Francis Albert Sinatra did in 1964 on the Might As Well Be Swing album with Count Basie's orchestra. Now, we picked up about 40 plus subscribers since my last show and I can't thank you enough for all your support and hitting that button and subscribing and telling all your friends I greatly appreciate you and I welcome you to the Ringside Report Web TV channel. Now remember, when we hit 1,300 that's 1300 zero, zero subscribers to the Ringside Report Web TV channel. I'm going to give away this next great prize. It's Welcome to the Big Time, the autobiography of Ernie the Acorn Shavers. Great book, and it is autographed by the one and only Ernie the Acorn Shavers, a buddy of mine. And all you have to do, folks, forget about it, is hit that button in the top right-hand corner and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, and we will pick one random winner from the United States or overseas, and we will cover postage and handling. Now, if you want to get your question on my next show or a future show, send them in to ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringsidereport2014 at gmail.com. Now, leave your comments below. I always respond. And, uh, Let's have a great dialogue back and forth. We don't always don't have to agree. That's fine. But let's keep it respectful. To get respect, you must show respect. All right. So without further ado, forget about it. Let's get into your great questions. This AM from Tulsa, Oklahoma. First up, Bad Brad, this really has to be my new favorite show. Well, thank you, pal. In reference to the last show I watched, when giving praise and respect to the late Alexis Arguello, do you believe in the Panama Lewis bottle conspiracy that went down during the Aaron Pryor fight? Panama did say, give the bottle I mixed after Pryor caught new life, it seemed. Ransom S. from Baltimore, Maryland. Well, welcome to the show, Ransom S. from Baltimore, Maryland, my old stomping grounds. Are you old enough to remember Odell's and some of those nightclubs over there? Yeah, I used to hang back in the 90s up there, man. Now... Let me tell you about that Aaron Pryor, who happens to be my number one favorite fighter of all time. Alexis was my number two. Panama Lewis, scumbag. Put together, scumbag. Period. End of story. Did the thing with Lewis Risto, with the gloves. Never can come in a boxing ring again. I wish he could never come out of a boxing gym again, but okay. I interviewed Aaron 20 years ago. He actually was my very first interview, which was... Very uh, uh, humbling to, out the gate, do my very first interview with my number one favorite fighter of all time. And in my opinion, the greatest junior welterweight fighter, champion of all time. And I asked Aaron about this. And he said it was peppermint schnapps, which opened up his breathing. Now, was that illegal? It probably was. But here's the thing. If it wasn't peppermint schnapps or whatever it was, he would, they were never tested afterwards. So really, you can't convict Aaron. And Aaron was so pissed off that they said that that win was tainted, that he gave him an immediate rematch. And in the second fight, Alexis got bombed out, I think, in the 10th round, I think it was, and had really wasn't in the fight for the most part. He, he got knocked down, and he sat on his derriere because he knew, he knew it was over. It, it was sad to see Alexis... Get knocked out twice in a row like that, but he was still a, he's still a legendary fighter. Got rest his soul as well. So that's what I believe it was. Peppermint schnapps was it illegal? Probably was, uh, but they didn't test. 
So that's where you got to go with that. With that said, Aaron Pryor is still the greatest junior welterweight champion in the history of the junior welterweight division. After him, I would say Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. All right, Ransomers, send in questions anytime, pal. Good question. Bad Brad, thanks for accepting my Facebook request the other day. Your post, shows, and articles are always on the money. Well, thank you, pal. I wanted to get your take on pay-per-view numbers for GGG versus Canelo. Do you see it beating Floyd versus Canelo? Rafael G. from Houston, Texas. Well, first of all, Rafael G., my sincere prayers go out to the people in Houston and Texas surrounding areas that have been hit horribly by Hurricane Harvey. My condolences to the people that were lost. It's a tragedy. I mean, it just, I, it just, it's, it's overwhelming watching it. It's, it's very, very sad. Hopefully, your family didn't get hit. Um, but my prayers go out to all the people that have suffered uh, such, such tragic losses. Um, you, you're in my prayers. Okay, can GGG beat uh, GGG versus Canelo beat Floyd versus Canelo? It's going to be tough. You know, here's the thing that happened. That circus act between Floyd, Make It Rain, Mayweather Jr., and Conor No Business and Boxy McGregor overshadowed what is going to be a great fight on September 16th. It was sad to see. It took a, like a complete back seat when it's the, on paper right now, it's the fight of the year. You know, hopefully it lives up to it. But, you know, I know that they, they a lot of people, you know, boxing purists, which I consider myself, we're, you know, foaming, chomping at the bit, I should say, to see the fight go down. Now, actually, I'll pay for Azul to see this fight uh, on pay-per-view. I hope it does, but I got a feeling it's not going to. And I think some of the, the uh, 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 shine on it was lost because of that circus act. But uh, nonetheless, I will be watching it, and uh, we'll see what the numbers turn out. I hope it hits over a million. I think it will. But GGG only pay-per-view, I believe, was against David Lemieux, and it did horrible numbers. Canelo obviously is the draw even though Triple G is very popular as well. And it's, it's kind of like a pick and fight. I don't know what the odds are, but you got uh, people on both sides and, and with strong stances on why their fighter is going to win. Let's just hope for a great fight. And if the pay-per-view numbers do great, okay. If they don't, hey, let's still hope for a great fight. All right, again, my, my sincere prayers go out to you and everybody in Houston and surrounding areas in Texas. And on that note, folks... Check out our new commercials. I think you're going to enjoy them. I think you're going to laugh at one of them, especially. And on that note, we're going to take a short commercial Hey, folks, break. this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And I am the host of the RSR Video Email Bag Show on the Ringside Report Web TV channel. Now, if you want to advertise on my show, send your business inquiries to Ringside Report. 2014 at gmail.com. Again, that's ringside report 2014 at gmail.com. Or if you're on Facebook and we're Facebook friends, you can send me an instant message or you can call the ringside report office at 703 517 2155. Forget about that's it. That's Pat Cooper, he's an Italian comedian that I was his guest in Atlantic City. We had dinner, great guy. Tony Curtis over there, and then there's Frank Sinatra, or my pal Ace Alanya, who uh, owns uh, the Italian trip. Are we going to do a history lesson on these pictures, or are we going to shoot your video ad? Uh, excuse me. Did you not ask for a history lesson on these pictures? No. Oh, wrong person. Forget about it. That's right. We do have to shoot this book ad. Yeah. All right, folks. Here's the book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime by The Man with the Fedora. The Pinky Ring, and the New York Thing. Forget about it. Man, Brad Berkwood. And if you want to pick up my book, go to authorhouse.com, which you will save a few fazools because you can buy it there wholesale, or you can pick it up at any retail outlet, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, online. Now, for the folks that always ask me, would I personally autograph your book? Yes, I will. Forget about it. All you have to do is pay postage and handling to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I will autograph your book with an inscription that you want or an inscription of what uh, I put in there. Either way, I'm going to take care of you. 
And for all the people that have supported me over the years and picked up the book, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. All right. And as we always do, forget about it. Bad all right, out. folks, we're now back. Jenny, if you want to me, where you want the bottles go? Muskogee, North Tulsa, Coffeeville. Coffeeville? Who the hell wants to go to freaking Coffeeville? And you forgot who I am. I'm the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And this is another RSR video email bag show on the Ringside Report Web TV channel. Well, folks, did you enjoy the new commercials? Leave me a comment below if you enjoyed the book one. I think you probably laughed because we previewed it on Facebook last night and got a lot of laughs. So, again, if you want to be on my show, send your questions into Ringside Report. 2014 at gmail.com. Leave your comments below. I always respond. All right. Now let's get into the rest of your great questions this early, which I'm not usually up. AM, forget about it. Bad Brad, what you said about Alexis on your last show moved me, brother. Well, you know what? There's two people that have mentioned that about Alexis. And thank you for the compliments. But I got to tell you, Alexis was a legendary champion, as I said before, a great human being, God rest his soul. So it, it was easy to say what I did. It was the truth. It was from the heart. But I'm glad that there's people out there that still remember Alexis, the explosive thin man Arguello, because he was class. And he goes on to say, "Move me, uh, Alexis, on your last show, move me, brother. Okay, you, I already said it. Like you, I thought the world of him as a fighter and a man. I want to ask you if you knew whatever happened to Andy Gannigan. A former uh, opponent of Alexis's who faced him for his title, dropped him, and was eventually knocked out by Arguello. Uh, he sure could punch. Brian N. from Miami, Oklahoma. Well, I'm sorry. Brian P. I said N., I think. Brian P. It's early for me. I told you, I'm not usually up at this time. I'm up all night long working on the websites, and I sleep during the day. I'm a night owl. I'm a vampire. Forget about it. Andy Gannigan. The Hawaiian punch. Could he punch? Forget about it. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Andy Gannigan. His big win that put him in that title shot against Alexis Arguello came against Oklahoma City's champion, the first world champion of Oklahoma, Sean Bubblegum O'Grady, who he knocked out. So that put him in line for the title shot against Arguello. He fought Arguello and he did drop him, but Alexis wound up knocking Andy out. Andy had one more fight after Alexis for the USBA title against Jimmy Paul, who was the IBF lightweight champion. He wasn't an IBF, obviously, then. He was the USBA. And Jimmy Paul was out at Kronk Gym under Emmanuel Stewart. And Jimmy knocked out Andy Gannigan as well. And that was the end of his career. And I think that was 1983. Don't quote me on the year, but I think it was 83. Sadly, uh, and obviously you didn't notice because you asked me what he's doing today, Andy Gannigan died at the age of 59 in 2012 of liver cancer. Great fighter. Very, very tough. Uh, one of those names that's mentioned back in the day, especially for his punch and power, God rest his soul. So that is the story and sadly the end of Andy Gannigan. Alright folks, the last question goes to Bad Brad. I know you called Mayweather Jr. versus McGregor a circus act, but did you hear now that Conor may fight Paulie Malinaji? If they did fight, who do you think wins? Joey T from Bronxville, New York. Well, Joey T from Bronxville, New York. When I used to catch the train into the city from North White Plains when I was living up there where, uh, when Handelman's was still around before the fire in the early 80s. Bronxville was an exit off of the train that we passed up. Circus Act, absolutely. I did hear that. I hope it doesn't happen. But if it does, forget about it. I won't be tuning in. Paulie and Malinaji by a decision because Paulie really can't. He's got no punch about it. I think he has six knockouts. He, he hits no power. But he's a great boxer. Uh, he passed his prime, but he, I think he's still got enough to beat Conor. I don't think the fight's going to happen. I don't think Conor's going to ever box again because he made all that money. And who's he going to make it against? He's not going to make it against Paulie. It'll be a grudge match because of what happened in the sparring. But uh, I don't see it happening. I see him going back to the UFC. Making better money than he made, but never making what he made against Floyd. Make it rain, Mayweather Jr. I give Conor props for calling Floyd out and getting him to fight. 
but Connor can't box. I mean, I'm not going to go there. Watch my, watch my. If it wasn't my last show, I think it was my last show, where I, where I broke it down and said I wasn't going to talk about it no more. All right, forget about it. All right, folks. On that note, once again, make sure you hit that button and subscribe, 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 and I greatly appreciate everyone that does. And as we always do, that's another show in the can. Forget about it. And as Frank Sinatra say, so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad. Brad, out.